Hello, today we're going to look at gravitational potential energy and we're going to work out or use an equation to see if we can work out gravitational potential energy for a variety of different situations. Now the first thing is that gravitational potential energy is the energy gained by an increase in height. So it's the energy, ga energy gained by increasing the height of an object. The second thing to remember is gravitational potential energy is an energy store. There are various energy stores and gravitational potential energy is the one is one of the ones we're going to look at. So there's our meaning of it. We need to remember that as, as it's energy, we measure it in joules. And we're going to use an equation to calculate gravitational potential energy. And that's given as gravitational potential energy is mass times gravitational field strength times height. This, unfortunately, you have to memorize. This will not be given to you in the exam. Gravitational field strength is the effect of the force of gravity and it's given a value on planet Earth of 10 newtons per kilogram. That value will be given to you in the exam if you need to use it. Uh, we usually use 10, but they will give you the value. Sometimes, actually, they might give you a more accurate value, which is 9.81 newtons per kilogram for planet Earth. However, for the purpose of this video, we're going to use 10 throughout. Okay, but remember, it will be given to you if you're given a question on this in the exam. So another way you might see this written down is like so. So this is the same equation as above, but written in a slightly more tricky looking way, slightly more tricky. Um, remember, we, we're looking at gravitational potential energy, so it's written in three ways, the whole the whole three words, GPE or E with a small p. M is mass, gravitational field strength is written as G, and H is for height. We need to know the units for those different values. So for height, I'm sure you're getting the hang of this by now, is meters, always use meters when using this equation. G is newtons per kilogram, which we can just write out again there. Mass is in kilograms. Sometimes you have to convert to kilograms in questions. And gravitational potential energy, as we said, it's energy, so it's measured in joules. Sometimes you might give your answer in kilojoules, depending how big your number is. Okay, so it might be worth now having a go at an example. So we've got a person on a diving board above a swimming pool, and we've got the values we need to work out the gravitational potential energy. We've got a height, the increase in height, which is 3.2 meters. We've got a mass of 55 kg, and we're going to use a value of G as 10. So all we do is we put in the numbers into our equation. So that would be mass, which is 55, times g, which we're going to use 10, times the height, which is 3.2. And that will give us an answer of 100, no, 1,760 joules. Or we can write that out as 1.76 kilojoules by dividing by 1,000 to get to our kilojoules. So there's our answer for this person on our diving board. Now, the next example we could look at is very similar, but it's more practice. Now we've got a structure called a dam, which is a structure often found in rivers or sometimes found in rivers that, hold, that holds back water. And for our example here, we're working out gravitational potential energy again. So we've got the same chap sitting or standing at the top of this dam, and we're working out gravitational potential energy. So we can use the same equation, which remember you have to be able to recall, and it's mass times G times H, so that's 55, which is the mass, times 10 for G, and a height of 20 meters, which is given to us in the question. That gives us an answer of 11,000 joules, and again, divide it by 1,000 to get kilojoules, and there's our answer, the gravitational potential energy store of this young man at the top of that dam. Now, the reason why I choose the example of a dam is because it's sometimes used to generate electricity, and we often look at this idea when we're looking at generating electricity. The water will flow through that gap. It will turn this little structure over here, which is called a turbine, which in turn turns a generator which will then transfer kinetic energy a kinetic energy store to electrical energy 
So that's very useful to use that gravitational potential energy to provide us with electricity. So one more uh, example for practice. This time we're working out the gravitational potential energy of some water. And in fact, it's 10 kilograms of water. And we've got a height again of 20 meters. So just using the same equation again, which we need to know and memorize, we would do the mass, which is 10 kilograms given in the question, times G, which we're using as 10. This will be given in the question, remember, so perhaps I should have put that in there. And we multiply that by the height, which is 20 meters. And if we work that out, shouldn't need a calculator for that. That's 2000 joules or two kilojoules. Okay, so there's our answer. More practice at using that equation. Now, the last thing I wanna go through for this video is how we can compare gravitational potential energy with kinetic energy. We've looked at kinetic energy before, so we know we should know and remember the equation for that. If not, we'll remind ourselves in a moment. So what we have is our ball and its gravitational potential energy is 20 joules. And that ball falls to the ground, transferring that gravitational potential energy, that gravitational potential energy store into a kinetic energy store. So we get a transfer of that energy. Very important you use the word transfer and you don't say changes into or is converted to. Gravitational potential energy is transferred to kinetic energy. Okay, so as the ball falls, we get that energy transfer. Now imagine halfway down that fall. Okay, so we've got a certain height, halfway down. Let's write it in words. Halfway down, what's happened to the gravitational potential energy and what's happened to the kinetic energy? Well, what happens with the gravitational potential energy is it's been transferred, so halfway down, we're gonna go from 20 to 10. That's half of the value of the energy, but where's that energy gone? It can't just disappear. It's been transferred to kinetic energy, so our kinetic energy of the ball halfway down is also 10. Add those two together, and we're gonna get our initial 20 joules of energy that we had at the beginning. What about when the ball is about three quarters of the way down? Well, it's lost three quarters of its gravitational potential energy, so from 20, that would be a value of 5 joules. So the gravitational potential energy now is 5 joules. And the kinetic energy is 15 joules. So the two energies add up to our original 20 joules at the beginning. We do have to assume there are no other energy transfers when the ball is falling. So let's have a look at that, look at that the other way around. Imagine we've got a ball that we are actually throwing into the air. So we've got a kinetic energy of 30 joules. That's the energy with which the ball is, or the ball has as it's being thrown up in the air. So the ball is thrown upwards, vertically upwards, and that's the kinetic energy. What's the maximum gravitational potential energy at the maximum height it reaches? Well, it's very similar to our last idea. The kinetic energy is transferred to, in this case, gravitational potential energy. So it goes from the kinetic energy with which it was thrown up and it gets transferred to our gravitational potential energy at the top. So if all of that energy is transferred to gravitational potential energy, it makes sense that the gravitational potential energy at the top is going to be 30 joules. Okay, and again, we are assuming there are no other energy transfers. It's very important to uh, uh, make a note of that because in fact, we do get... In reality, we do get energy transferred in slightly different ways. Uh, for example, heat being generated with friction through the air. So that energy can be transferred to heat energy. So in this question, we're assuming there are no other energy transfers or they are so small, we're not going to take those into account. So let's just make a little note of that other energy transfer that might happen that we are ignoring for this question. So the transfer to heat because of friction of the ball with the air. Okay, so this is how we calculate gravitational potential energy and a connection or a relationship between gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy for a ball being thrown up or falling down.